going to do right now. We are going to move to Mikel Merino. According to reports on Mikel Merino from Sam Dean as well. Arsenal are plotting a move for Real Sociedad midfielder Mikel Merino. Uh, the Euros are now over, obviously. Arsenal's interest in the player predates the start of Euro 2024. It has been claimed in Spain that Sociedad would want around £20 million. Uh, that's a very good price for the players. The Euros winner now. Um, I would have expected him to be like 30 40 million or something, but £20 million is a, such a good fee. Um, now, if you buy from 20 million, I don't know if he's going to come to us and be a starter or not. Because Merino, we don't know the plans with um, Arsenal this time, which is good for me. I don't want it to be out there for everyone to know which players Arsenal want and all that. Absolutely no problem with it uh, being a secret, especially in terms of midfield. We don't know if Pat is going to stay. We don't know if um, Jorginho is going to start a certain number of games. Next, is just going to be totally a bench player. Um, we're still trying to, you know, decide whether Rice is going to be a permanent number eight. Or he's going to, you know, rotate sometimes. Players are number six. Sometimes players are number eight. We don't know which midfielders we're going to sign. Is it going to be a number six? A lot of the number sixes we are linked to have moved on. For Fana's going to AC Milan. Or Nana's going to um, Aston Villa. Who else? Uh, Luis has moved to Juventus. So those players that we're linked to, you're not going to get. But there's still a couple of others that are available. The likes of Bruno Grimais, very expensive. I don't think you're going to get him. Joanne Neves, very expensive. But there could be a lot of different midfielders available. And one of them is Marine. It's not significantly, and um, usually a number six, sorry, but... Um, is mainly a number eight. So could we end up getting Merino to play in that number eight position? Is he going to be a starter? Is he going to be a backup for um, our player um, Declan Rice? Or will Rice move to the number six and mean Merino plays as a number eight? Could be a possibility. So it depends on whether party is going to move on or if you're going to sign two midfielders. I would love to get two midfielders. The problem is that we need a winger, we need a striker. I would have loved to get two midfielders, you know, a number six and a number eight. And then, you know, just have different options. And then you have two, three midfielders on the bench. You can come on and make a difference. Very important. Uh, it's very important to have a squad like that. Now, Man City don't have too many midfielders like Kovacic, Rodri, maybe one more in terms of those number, number six and number eight positions. Um, they have a couple of players who can play them, but like Rodri and Kovacic, they're professionals. But if you have like four or five midfielders, like Liverpool have plenty, like Curtis Jones, McAllister, and or like just different options in midfield. So Bryce can rest for a game. Party can rest for a game if he's still here. Jorginho can rest for a game. Now, Rice, speaking of Rice, Rice is not going to come back until August 5th. That is the, what the reports are saying. So Rice and Saka are going to, uh, Rice, Saka, Ramdel, Rare, they're going to come back on August 5th. That means they're going to miss the whole USA tour and they're probably going to miss maybe one Emirates Cup game or something. So there, there's a big chance, like, we might not have Rice and Sack and those players in the first game of the Premier League this season because they need to go on their holidays. They just finished their tournament yesterday. Um, that is why I usually want Arsenal players to be knocked out early, um, you know, in, in terms of being selfish. I'm an Arsenal fan. I'm not a Spain fan or an England fan. I want our players to come back fit and early so that we have them next season. But that means Rice will not be there for preseason. So we'll have to try different things. So as of now, I don't think Pat is going to leave because Rice is not here anyway. And um, Jorginho, I don't know if he's back from his holiday. So we literally don't have any goalkeeper to play right now. We might have to use the youngsters. And in terms of midfield, at least we have the opportunity of trying different um, different things. Now, even if you sign Merino, Merino still can't come until the same time that the Declan Rice and Reyes will come because him himself, he's been at the U.S. as well. So I don't know what you're going to do with the midfield position. If uh, Jorginho is going to start the season, are we going to go for any other midfielders that are, uh, you know, playing at um did not play at the US because even someone like um Bruno Gumaz played at the Copa America. So there's not too many other midfielders who are going to start um the games for us, especially during preseason. And it's Liverpool, United, so it's not easy teams in the preseason. But we are linked to Merino. Um for 20 million we could get the deal done. But just for um just like the other players that have been at the US, this is going to be again complicated because we have to wait for the player to come back from his holiday. We have to negotiate unless he wants to sign for us before um, he goes on his holiday and all that. It's going to be a bit complicated, but maybe it can be done quickly because it's a 20 million deal. And as I say, don't be surprised if Calafiori ends up being our fourth signing and we actually get, you know, set for then someone else ahead of Calafiori and then Calafiori becomes like the fourth signing and not the first or second signing. So, uh, Mikel Marino, we are expected to make a move very, very soon. I think Atsa really likes the player. We've been told that Atsa has called the player before to discuss with him um, how he's going to fit at Arsenal, how he's going to help in the midfield position. He won the most aerial deals last season, as we said, um, in terms of 
physicality and why at one scene this is what you were told. Arsenal wants a central midfield and one player of interest is Sociedad's Merino. Mikel is an admirer of his talent and physicality. Merino turned 28 in June, which would place him outside of Arsenal's typical recruitment um, profile. The relative youth of the squad, however, means they can add experienced players when required, as they did with Jorginho and Trosso. This was according um, to Ghana Blog for the Athletics. So, yeah, the player in terms of age doesn't um, doesn't matter. I saw someone commenting on a video yesterday and saying uh, Marina is old. Nah, 27, 28 is not old. That, that is the prime of your career. If you're 32, 33 in terms of football, then, yeah, I can argue all. But the likes of Chaucer, we signed them around that age as well. So uh, they can still do something for you. Um, Chelsea are the ones who have the policy of not signing players above 25. I think that, that puts um, a bit of a block on how you're going to build the team. If you start saying you're not going to sign any on above 27, 26, or for midfield, a very good midfielder who's 20, you know, 27 becomes available. They just turned 27. Are you not going to sign them because they just turned 27 the previous day? No. So Marin is a very good player. He's just won the Euros. You've seen him performing for them. He didn't always start. He came um, came off the bench and he looked really good. Another player looked really good yesterday, but there was Zubimendi. When Rodri went out of that game, I thought they were going to struggle, but Zubimendi actually came in and did well. I, I wanted him, remember? Um, but he didn't want to come to the Premier League. They want to move from Spain. But those Sociedad players I saw in that tournament, Merino, Zubimendi, uh, La Normand, I think he's moved to Atletico Madrid. Those players have been really good um, for Spain in midfield. So getting players from Sociedad and Bilbao and Atletico Madrid, those guys are really good. So we're expecting um, to hear a couple of um, things in the next two, three days on Merino. I think by the end of this week, we're going to know whether we're going to sign Merino or not. Um, for sure, we're going to hear it. Um, we'll either be hearing whether he's going to stay there, whether he's going to go to Atletico Madrid or Barcelona, or is he going to come to us? So we'll just have to wait for him to come back from his holiday. So um, it's complicated. It's complicated. No one knows what's going on in terms of transfer news right now, um, like in terms of 100% sure. Players are the Euros, players are coming back from the Copa America, players are on holiday, players are in you know, the money, negotiations is going on. I wouldn't be surprised if we just heard about a random player coming from nowhere, like a random midfielder from the Serie A or La Liga coming in who was not playing at the at the Euros. Uh, one player who's left Arsenal to date has been confirmed is Lokonga. Just quickly on him, we've talked about him a lot. Albert Sambi Lokonga to Sevilla, season-long loan, 12 million by option, salary covered in full by Sevilla. 25% sell-on clause inserted for Arsenal if Sevilla activate by option. This is according to Fabrizio Romano. So um, he's been unveiled today. As um as a severe player, um Albert Sambila Congas, so all the best to him. It's a loan deal though, with an option to buy. Now I'm a bit worried whether he's going to he's they're actually going to buy him, you know. I'm actually I don't know, unless he goes there and does very well and they pay us that 12 million euros, hopefully. But I'd not be surprised if he returns to us next season, and then we have to look for more um to do um in terms of selling him but uh we don't want to talk about lokonga too much you already know the details you're going to get 12 million next and if we if they do decide to buy him we're going to have a 25 percent sell-on clause so if they decide to go on and sell him for 100 million pounds in the next three years we are going to get 25 million from that so yeah that that is how it works you're going to have a 25 percent sell-on clause and that is it now let me read the, the article uh, let me go back to marina this is what they had to say about marino um on the article arsenal still in negotiation now um, let me move to, from that arsenal approaching a move for real stead midfielder michael marino who played a crucial uh role um in spain's triumph at euro 2024 the club's interest in marino predates the start of the tournament tournament in germany and his reputation has been further enhanced by his performances over the past month so yeah we We've been interested in him before, um, even before the, the, the Euros started. So it's not a case of um, him playing at the Euros and us being interested in him after the Euros. No, the midfielder featured in all seven of Spain's matches um, at Euro 2024, mostly from the bench and struck a dramatic late win against Germany in the quarterfinal. Marino, surely um, this midfielder made it 2-1. Yeah, yeah, they go on to say how he won the game for Germany, for Spain against Germany. The 28-year-old is slightly older than Arsenal's usual transfer targets. Um, the average age of their signings over the past three years is 24, but he could represent a good value as he has only one year remaining on his contract. So that's another reason why is that cheap. Marina, some experience of English football, having played for Newcastle United. I saw I saw that last week and I was like, I never saw Marina playing for Newcastle. He's actually playing for Newcastle back in 2017-2018. I don't remember that. Uh, he has been a consistent and reliable figure to say that over the last six seasons, averaging more than 30 appearances in each of his league campaigns at the club. Yeah, that's another thing. We heard that he's missed like 11 games or something the last five years. 
that is something that wants in his team. Players who can play numerous games without getting injured. He is a former teammate of um, Arsenal captain Martin Odegaard. And if the club choose to step up their interest, would provide extra depth in defensive midfield and box-to-box midfield positions. Arsenal are likely to face strong competition for Marina's signature. However, with Spanish reports claiming um, that Barcelona and Atletico Madrid are mind the club's interested. So... Let's see how it's going to go. Uh, we are very definitely interested in him. Um, I, I'd not be surprised if he signed a midfield. I expect us to sign a midfielder 100%. And I do expect us to sign um, Calafeo 100% and expect us to sign a striker 95%. The one I'm not sure whether we're going to get or not is a backup for Saka. That one, we've not had anything really concrete. So I'm not sure whether we're going to get a backup for Saka or are we going to use Vieira there next season? Are we going to use Jesus there next season? Are we going to use Martinelli there next season? Because Martinelli... The, this, the two or three games he played at the, on the right side um, at the end of last season, including the last game of the season when Sako was out injured. So could he be moving Martelli on the right side permanently? I don't know. So that's the position I'm not sure what we are going to do um, with. So I'm going to come to your comments. But first, the latest on Emil Smith-Rowe. What's the latest on him? According to report. 